You are listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. The route master pulled in right on time this evening, Maurice. Good evening, sir. I'm glad we have a little time in the lobby, so I can express to you that the MadCon 2020 site is finally up and running. Yes, Jack and the council for MadCon, with the help of Brian Bacchicchio, worked to get the site up two years before the world's first full modern audio drama convention. So please head on to mad-con.com and reserve your tickets for this once-in-a-lifetime event. Well... Oh, there we go. More on that story later. For now, I will have to get to my seat. This evening, we have a special remake from the Amigos Collective. Produced by Lothar Tuppen and starring... This way, Mr. Oak. What? What do you mean I'm in this one? Really? Okay, sorry ladies and gentlemen, it looks like um, I'm in this production, so uh, I'd best get backstage and into makeup. I don't think I'm on in the first scene, but uh, that's no excuse to be late. Evening, sir. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me as I go and prepare for a comedy of danger. Perhaps the very first fully produced radio drama in English from the Amigos. The year, 1924. The place, a gallery in a Welsh coal mine. Hello? What's happened? The lights have gone out. Where are you? Here. Where? I can't find you. Here. I'm holding my hand out. I can't find it. Why here? Who? What's that? It's all right. It's only me. He did frighten me. Touching me like that suddenly in the dark. I had no idea you were so close. Catch hold of my hand. Whatever happens, we mustn't lose each other. (sighs) That's better. But the lights, why have they gone out? I don't know. I suppose something has gone wrong with the dynamo. They'll turn them up again in a minute. Jack, I hate the dark. Cheer up, darling. You'll be all right in a minute or two. It's it's so frightfully dark down here. No wonder. There must be nearly a thousand feet between us and the daylight. It's not surprising it's a bit dusky. I didn't know there could be such utter blackness as this. Ever. It's so dark. As if there was never such a thing as light. Anywhere. Oh, Jack, it's like being blind. Completely blind. When are they going to come back on? They'll turn the lights up again soon. I wish we'd never come down this beastly mine. I knew something would go wrong. But it'll be all right, dear. It's only the lights. Where are the others? They're just on ahead, not far. Suppose we get lost. We can't get lost, Mary darling. I wish you hadn't wanted to drop behind the others. Jack, I'm afraid of the dark. My mistake. Buck up, Mary old girl. It'll soon be over. And I wish we hadn't left these miner's lamp things they gave us behind. Oh! 
now have all the incompetent idiots turning the lights off just when a party of visitors were seeing the place. Oh, call this a coal mine, the damned dark rabbit hole I call it, a rotten rat hole, the dratted wet smelly drain by oh, the dithering fools. It's Mr. Bags. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Who's there? Of all the stupid meddlesome idiots. Oh, Mr. Bax, what's happened? Is it all right? Is it all right indeed? Leaving us suddenly in the dark like this. But has there been an accident? Oh, oh goodness knows. I'd expect anything from a country like Wales. They've got a climate like the flood and a language like the Tower of Babel. And then they go and lure us into the bowels of the earth and turn the lights off. Wretched, incompetent. Oh, their houses are full of cockroaches. Oh. Well, I suppose the only thing to do is to sit and wait for the lights to go up again. There's no danger, is there? No, young lady, there's no danger, but it's damned unpleasant. Oh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm beginning to think it's a little bit fun, actually. Well, if you can find any fun in breaking your shins in the dark... Why? But don't you call it fun being in a pit disaster? <laughs> but this isn't a disaster. It's only the lights. Of course, silly. <laughs> you don't think it would be fun if it were a real disaster, do you? <laughs> but the lights going out might have been a disaster. Think how thrilling it's going to be to talk about afterwards. <laughs> I say, Jack. Yes? Let's pretend it's serious. What do you mean? Let's pretend it's a real disaster. And we're cooped up here forever. <laughs> and we'll never get out. <laughs> Don't joke about it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> There's no real danger, is there? Let's get all the thrills we can. Well, of all the morbid <laughs> young people nowadays. I love thrills. Love them. Oh, oh. Let's pretend the roof has fallen in and they can't get at us. Very well, but what a baby you are. Here we are, my dear, buried alive. Oh, Jack. Alas, they will never find us. Oh, Jack. Well? I'm so frightened. What that? About the roof having fallen in. But it hasn't. It's only pretense. Yes, but when I pretend, it seems so real. <sighs> Then don't pretend. But I want to pretend. I want to be frightened. Hold my hand tight. W won't you? Go on. We shall suffocate or starve, or both, my dear, in each other's arms. Oh, Jack. Even death shall not part us. Oh, Jack, don't. It's too awful. There'll be articles in all the newspapers. Ooh, I wish I could read them. You can't have your funeral and watch it, young lady. Oh, this is fun. I wouldn't have missed it for anything. Won't I make Daddy's flesh creep? <laughs> oh. Good God! Mary! Jack! 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 Quiet, you little fool! Jack. Let go! You're throttling me! Let go of me! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the <coughs> oh, the dust is choking me. <laughs> I can't breathe. Stop screaming, you. How can you expect to be able to breathe if you're screaming all the breath out of your body? Quiet. Jack! Pull yourself together. We're all right. We're not hurt. No, sir, we're not hurt. But listen. Water. Shut up, you idiot. Don't let her hear. What's that roaring? It's only the echo. Oh, Mr. Bax, can't we find the others? I don't think we could, young lady. It wouldn't be much use to us if we did. Oh, good God! Good God! Good God! They're no better off than we are. Listen! That might be them! That must be the others. They can't be very far off. Let's let's call to them. 
Sound carries a long way in a tunnel. But listen, God, those chaps have courage. You're finding some good in the Welsh, then, after all. The echo's getting louder. Jack! It isn't an echo, it's water! Mine's flooding, we'll be drowned! I wish I had the faith of those chaps, sir. It'd make dying easy. Oh, Jack, I don't want to die yet. I won't! I won't! I won't! No! It has got to come some time, young lady. Isn't it better for it to happen now in your lover's arms? Death might have parted you two, instead of which he's simply joining you closer together. I want to live! Shut up, you old fool! It's all very well to be stoical about death at your age, but we're young! we got a life before us! Can't you keep quiet about it then, you young jackanapes? Do you think I want to die either? But it's not good manners to talk about it. Where, where'd we be if we all started screaming about it, eh? Behave yourself, sir. Those chaps over there don't want to die either, but they don't seem to make a fuss about it. They sing hymns. If you and me don't feel like singing hymns, we can at least behave like gentlemen. <laughs> behave like gentlemen, indeed. I tell you, it's all very well for an old chap like you who'll die anyhow in a year or two, but it's different for us. We're young. Well... If you want to make a scene, you shall have one, sir. Do you think it is any easier for the old to die than the young? I tell you, it's harder, sir, harder. Life is like a trusted friend. He grows more precious as the years go by. What's your life to mine? A shadow, sir. Yours, twenty-odd years of imbecile childhood, lunatic youth. The rest of me a rosy presumption of the future. Mine, sixty solid years of solid, real living. No more rosy dream. Do you think it is as easy for me to leave my solid substance as you to leave your trumpery shadow? What's your life worth to the world? Who's dependent on you? What good are you to anyone? And what good are you, young man? One person is dependent on me anyway. (laughs) You mean that you are loved by this young lady? And if you both die, what loss is that to the world? Two opposite quantities cancelling out. Oh, you beast. You cruel beast. How dare you? I must speak, madam, in common justice to my age, since that young cub has started the subject. The old are always being twitted with their unwillingness to die, yet it is the most natural thing in the world that it should be the young who haven't a notion of what life really is, who should be ready to chuck it away for any footling reason that comes along. Shut up! Look here, instead of talking like this, let's do something. Let's make some sort of an attempt to escape. What do you propose to do, young man? Why, look for some way out! We can't stay down here and drown like rats in a cage! If you start to walk, my boy, you'll start to run. And if you start to run, you'll get in a panic and go mad in the dark. I'd rather die with my wits about me. I'd rather not die at all. Keeping still is the only thing for us if we don't want to lose our heads. Remember, we're goodness knows how far into the side of a hill. What earthly hope do you think there is of finding our way out? Oh, the dark. I I do hate the dark. I think I could go more easily if I could see light just once more before it happened. Here it comes. Listen. Yes, it will be on us in another five minutes. Thank heaven it finishes us off quickly. Oh, think of dying somewhere out in the open. In the sunlight. Me able to see you. Didn't you able to see me? What bliss it would be. It's strange. How little chaps wonder what will happen to them after death. One hardly thinks about it. Yet, I don't know. How thrilled we should be if we met a chap who really knew. In five minutes, we're going to know ourselves. All three of us. (laughs) 
never have always wanted to travel. Now I'm going to. Jack, my poor dear. Mary, do you know I'm beginning to feel as excited about it as a child going to the seaside for the first time. Aren't you? Jack. Jack, how queer you are. I've never looked at it like that. Well, I wasn't in any hurry to die, but now it's coming. I feel sort of proud of myself, as if it was a very wonderful thing to manage to pull off. Oh, Jack, darling. There's only one thing I'm sorry about. What is it? I've forgotten the luggage. Jack. <laughs> the train's coming, and there's no time to go back for it. <laughs> Who will feed the parrot? Jack! Oh. Pull yourself together, sir. Keep control. It's all right, Bax. I'm not going off my nut. I mean what I say. What do you think I've got to live for? Besides myself and Mary. Why, my work? If it wasn't for that, Bax, I'd go to death without caring a tuppenny damn. I'd die just for the fun of the thing. To see what it felt like. I shouldn't worry about that if I was you. The world will get on all right without you, never you fear. And what is your work? I write. Poetry. Oh, good God. You call that work? Oh, Jack! Jack! The water is coming! It's over! Oh, my feet! Oh! oh, no, 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 no! Courage, darling. Oh, Jack, I don't want to die. I hate it. I know that I want to live. Do you hear me? I want to live. I want to live. I want, I want to live. Don't make it harder, dear. You don't think it's fun for me? You having to die? Jack. Jack, it's awful. Only for an hour more. We do want to live for another hour. Jack, there was something I wanted to say to you. And I can't remember it. Do I must, must, do I must remember it? Or it's too late. So, oh, Jack. Oh, God, can't I be allowed to finish my work? Damn your work, sir. Do you think you're the only one dying before his time? I tell you, every man dies before his time, even if he lives till he's as old as Methuselah. It's up to my knees. Don't clutch at me like that, Mary. It won't do any good. But the water! The current is washing me away! I've got you! And I've got my other arm round the wooden thing! Hold tight then! I've got you tight! Oh, if only I could see you! Just think of all the things I had meant to do! <laughs> Shut up about the things you had meant to do, you young cub! Will you realize we're all in the same boat? And it's as hard for me to die as you. Or worse, by God, a thousand times worse. You hoary old sinner! Can't you prepare to get out of the world instead of cursing at me? Help! Help! I can't die! I won't die! I'm an old man! I won't! I won't! Hold yourself in, you old coward! Oh, Mr. Bax. I'm quite calm now. I don't mind dying. A bit. Actually... Nor do I, now that it's help so me. close. Help! 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 It's no good, Mr. Bax. Nobody can possibly hear us. The only thing is to stay calm. It won't be long now. Oh, help! 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 What's that? Listen! Help! Help! Shut up, Bax! We want to listen! It's up to my waist now, Jack. My God, it's someone tapping. We're here, Father Long. Is it? They'll find our bodies. That's all. They'll find us if they're quick enough. Father Long still. That's right. They can't possibly be quick enough. Besides, I don't want them to find me. It's a strange thing, Mary. But before, I looked on death as a terrible thing. And now I am so nearly dead. I wouldn't come back to life for anything. There's such a lot to find out the other side. Help. Pick quicker, you fools, quicker. We're drowning. Stop it, Bax. It won't be in time. Why can't you behave sensibly? Jack, darling. 
They'll never leave you. How do you know they'll let you stay with him, you little fool? What do you know of death? I tell you, death isn't heaven and it isn't hell. Death's dying, you young dolts. Death's being nothing, not even a dratted ghost clanking its chains on the staircase. My soul's immortal, Mr. Bax. I know that. But if your soul's immortal, is your mind immortal? Or is your soul going to wander about without one like an imbecile? Hey, you young fools, you've never thought. I have, oh my god, I have these last ten years. Oh, Jack, it's up to my chin. Help me. Let me lift you in my arms, darling. Then when it gets up to my chin, we'll die together. Say it isn't true, what he's been saying. No, darling, of course it's not true. Hurry up, you dolts, you blockheads. Smash your way in. We're drowning, I tell you. Drowning. Quick. Quick. Goodbye. Jack did. Oh my God, they must be nearly through. God, this suspense. How much longer before we know whether we're going to live or die? I don't care which, but I do want to know. Look, there's a light. A hole in the roof. Quick, quick. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's through. Quick, below there. Catch the dip. Quick, I'm an old man. There's a girl here. By gad, Jack, a near shave. Come along, young lady, I've got the rope. Yeah, she's fainted. Never mind. Pass her up. She'll be all right. Just a bit of the rip round your shoulders. Well, she's had the thrill she wanted, all right. I'll give you something to write about, too, my boy. All right above there, have you got a... Roy, now the next. Up you go quick, Mr. Bax. The water's still rising. No, my boy. After you. You're more value in the world than I am. Nonsense, sir. After you. You're an older man than I am. Quick, sir, or well, there won't be any time. You've got Mary to think of. Now, Jack. All the way above there. No, no, lower me. It's me you're hauling up, and it ought to be Bax. We'll have you up first. There's no time to waste, all right? I'm all right. Blow away again. Below there. Bax, catch hold. Have you got it? Bax? Bax! Good God, he's gone. The sonic summer stock recreation of Richard Hughes's 1924 script, A Comedy of Danger, was brought to you by The Amigos. Starring in the cast was... Pete Lutz of the Narada Radio Company as the opening announcer. Tanya Malevich of Lightning Bolt Theater of the Mind as Mary. Andre Luke Martinez as Jack. David Alt as Bax. And featuring your amigos, Jeff Billard, Lothar Tuppen, and Jack Ward as the various Welsh voices. Sound design, direction, and mastering was by Lothar Tuppen. Thanks for listening. Thank you and congratulations to the Amigos with this year's entry, A Comedy of Danger, produced by Lothar Tuffin. Yeah, I apologize for not removing the grease paint yet, but it's quite the hike from backstage over here to the beautiful rake seats. There's nothing like this in the green room, I can tell you that. I will be talking to the manager of this establishment, but... While I do that, be with us next week as Narada Radio Company returns with a hilariously favourite old-time radio stage and film classic. For now, I'm headed to the Amigos after party, and until next week, for Jack Ward and myself, I'm David Alt. Thank you and good night. And that's this week's performance for the 2018 Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. All productions, performances, characters and scripts presented in the Playhouse belong strictly to their copyright holders, and no copyright infringement is assumed or intended. The Sonic Summerstock Playhouse is part of the Sonic Society podcast and Electric Vicuna Productions. Any shows that continue their run must have explicit permission from all parties involved. The Playhouse theme was written and performed by Sharon B. Join us next week at the Playhouse for another classic performance. I am your announcer, David Alt. Good night.
This has been an Electric Vicuna production. It's so frighteningly... Frighteningly? <laughs> if you do a blooper... A blooper... Blooper? If you do a blooper reel, include that. That's hilarious. Blech. No, that was Australian. That was, that was Australian. Oh, God, that was dramatically dramatic. What? Puke! Okay. So, old and grumpy. I can do old and grumpy. Captain Jack Sparrow! I, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm just... I am... I'm, I never go on tangents. I apologize. I'm not being very professional. That's the risk of getting to be my friend. Oi! I'm trying to record, mate. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome, children, to the Circus of Doom. <laughs> Come on in. Don't you want to see the horsies run around? Uh... <laughs> oh, I sound like a creepy b- <laughs> Yes. All right. That was fun. Oh, my God. I'm sweating like you wouldn't believe. Like, all this energy is just like, hey, <sighs> hey. Moving on. Chauncey Haworth, Mark Slade, and Lothar Tuppen, the demented minds behind the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour, bring you... Twisted Pulp Magazine. A journey beyond surreality to worlds you never knew or hoped existed. Worlds of the supernatural. Worlds of dark satire. Worlds of nightmarish futures. Twisted Pulp Magazine. If you thought the 21st century was weird enough already, think again. Twisted Pulp Magazine. A step beyond your grandfather's pulp. Available at digitalvaudeville.com. That's D I G I T A L V A U D E V I L L E dot com. Mm-hmm.